So how to worship God in the beauty of holiness? We are sinful people and we have the privilege to worship Him. And because of Jesus, He came and He given us the forgiveness of sins. That's why whenever we go to God, to Jesus to pray, first of all we repent for our sins and then ask the Lord and then we pray. It is not that we are something special, and but in Christ we are special. But doesn't mean that we can take God in just like our, uh, you know, earthly father. We cannot write that. Whatever may be, is a heavenly father. Is the one who created the heaven and the earth, and also that he is so powerful, and he is a mighty God and everlasting Father. We cannot just take it as a granted that you know go to the Father as we going to the Father, and the children are you know demanding something, and it is their right to demand. <laughs> Not like that. So here that God has chosen us for the only purpose for us being a children of God to worship Him. The another purpose God wants to bless us. You know, that's the way that God has chosen us for his name. Though, you know, people of Israel, and he said, they are the people who have the, his name. And for our turn, they will worship the living God. So that is the main thing. The God is in the midst of the praises. Even in the God's kingdom, the Sarabin and Serabin, and they are always praising God, holy, holy, holy. And our Lord of God is, is in the midst of the you know, Caribbeans. That's what the BBC always. 24 hours, they are worshipping. Even when we go after the resurrection, go to the, the God's kingdom, then we be also 24 hours will be worshipping God. No pain, nothing, you no know, suffering, you know, all rejoice and we will not be like any flesh and the blood. We will be like angels and a glorified body and the glory of the, you know, Jesus Christ will be having in the God's kingdom. So for that, that uh, he prepared us on this earth. One day here we are going there to have such a worship in the God's kingdom. God prepared us to do the same thing in the kingdom. If we don't worship, we cannot expect even when we enter into it. Yes, even if we cannot call that, uh, you know, God is our father. Yes, the two differences, the difference between the people around the world and people on uh, except for Christ, they worship the unknown gods and we worship the living gods. That's the only difference. They are also worshipped and we are also worshipped. And in fact, and they are worshipping the unknown gods with fear and with the submission, so much they do it, go before the idols and worship. But as we are Christians, we don't have anything. We don't have, you know, any interests of a godly fear or maybe anything and we humble ourselves. Sometimes we command God and we ask God, Lord, you have to do it right now here. How can we command God to do like that? And even in our prayer, we say, Lord, we have to do it this other way. I want it to be done now. And when uh, our uh, minister, pastor, when pastor died in Chennai, my Pentecost pastor, see, he told them that he bring the pastor to the, my church. We are going to pray for him. We are going to raise him from the dead. And uh, so, and the, you know, his wife had brought, you know, all over the, you know, the body to come to the church with a hope. And this all these pastors, and there are so many persons invited to pray, not only one pastor. We are saying, I think that, that the pastor might have done it, happened that, that everyone has to pray that something you know, not will happen. And, uh, and they are ready to all these, uh, you know, cameras and all sorts of things that when he rise up to take the more photos and videos, all is, is prepared. God is a God, He is not going to do like that. When he prepared all the cameras and other things, nothing will happen. Why there's a cameras we are bringing to glorify our name? 
to put it in the TV and in so many places, well, this master that prayer, he has risen. So his name will be known to all the people. God is not for us. God is the one that when we have a heart to glorify his name, then there will be miracles and the wonders will happen, otherwise nothing will happen. So from the morning to evening they were praying, 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 nothing happened. Then the, his wife said, to, let me take the body at least I want to do this, you know, uh, you know other things to bury him. And uh, no, 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 please wait, 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 just pray, nothing happened at all. All the people were, then finally certain I am taking. Then, uh, then what they told, his wife was, you know, so much, you know, hurry up to take the body, otherwise God would have been raised. This fellow they could not do from morning to evening, crying and all, crying, everything. Finally they blamed the wife that to see could not wait to die that, otherwise it would have been dead. This is an excuse. So that's the way always that we want to have a fear of God. And when we go to the Lord that we should submit to Him, and you know, that we should repent for our sins, and then get the forgiveness, then only it will happen. So even when we go to the villages, you know, you know, mostly all this, you know, uh, um, Talmavli side and uh, Salem side, a lot of poor people, they will come for prayer, for healing, so many other things. We used to tell them that, you know, they never know about their sin. Everyone is a sinner. And there, you know, you know the, we cannot even explain how they are, their life is, we don't know. But first of all, we tell them that, look, I am a sinner. I think you are also a sinner. Then they say, yes, yes. If they say that you are a sinner, if they want about you, they will ask me. So I so, so I am a sinner, are you a sinner? I said, yeah. So if you have a sin, how can we expect that Jesus will heal you? That God will heal you? So that is to be forgiven first. So you believe in Jesus Christ, then you confess your sins, then I will pray, then God will do miracle. It's happening, you know, like. So that's the way that you know, God has you know, given us the power uh, you know, and the gift of the Holy Spirit so to do the miracles and wonders, not for our glory, for the glory of Jesus Christ in His name, the God. That's why they failed, they would not do anything at all. You know, like, so. So that, that's uh, that automatically, you know, the, when you have the decision to, you know, glorify the name of the Lord, God, you know, the Holy Spirit teaches what to do, what not to do, even before reading the Bibles. Holy Spirit leads us how to do, what should we do, and I think. And uh, so, that's the way that, you know, the many times among the Christians, not many miracles happening, where their faith is, is not that good. But the Hindus, when they come, when they near the, in the Haiti, their faith is so strong, and immediately God does the miracle in that life. And because they are the people who have to know Jesus Christ, we know them. We know Jesus Christ, we are experienced with Jesus Christ, we know His power, everything. They don't know anything. So that's why, you know, like, and we tell them that uh, about the Jesus Christ, then it becomes like, and the healing is happening and everything. So here, how to worship God in the beauty of holiness, in Psalm 29, 1 to 6. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. First of all, that you know, we want to give glory to God, only to God, not to anyone, and glory due to His name, and how to worship in holiness. So what do you mean by holiness in us? We don't have a holiness in us. Now how can we worship Him in holiness? So in 2nd Chronicle chapter 20, 21 says, And whom he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army and were saved. Here is telling that what the, you know, the power of the worship, how the power of the worship is, is making the things. <laughs> so, they appointed so some singers to sing and give praises to them. 
by which even and they won they won the victory of the war and it says praise the lord for his mercy mercy it is for you all when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushes against the people of ammon more and uh, and monsier who had come against jura and uh, they were in defeat just by prayers so we can see the power of prayer how that will be and how that they will be able to praise the beauty of his holiness so we know so they will read in the psalm that the homage is written about god's glory and his mighty powers and all the things so it's always good to read the psalm of and 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 to pray to god in that you know telling the words that will be for for one in psalm 34 and 5 says sing praises to the lord you saints of his and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name for his anger is but for a moment his favor is for large his favor is for life weeping may be for night but joy comes in the morning in any situation we have problems and the difficulties and the something is going you know we are our you know things we cannot do anything at all only just praise them even uh, you know uh, even when uh, peter was in the you know prison and they were all praying out saying and i think all and uh, see lot of there the person they were only singing songs what happened everything was loose and they were so that's the way that we say that in you know, the phrases should be always in our tongue and in our lips when the word that we have a time even when we have a worry or sorrows and sufferings that time just look at the lord and just keep phrases to him and sing song and god will take away the pain and the sorrows this is we can see we can, we can experience in a practical way how that in the praise worship we should help us in all the things so and uh, so this is the power of praises to god with the great thing and jesus said and god says i will fight for you how he is going to fight for us and he said i will go before you to fight for you here they are fighting the seekers they said come on praise to god and glorify his name and sing praises the beauty of holiness that's how you know the enemies were defeated and they went away so there's a power in that this one even in the churches also the important things is the worship only so when we all gather together and shout and sing a song and that is the one that god expects us and we don't do that we just you know but slowly we do even other people cannot hear the voice of us not that we should praise it in such a way and sing in such a way that will be and you know if you have any chance go to you know broad 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 way uh, you know there is a church in uh, dr wilkinson church and uh, often our worship as the that you are in the different world you are not on this earth often our worship our continuous worship and in the church for nine o'clock service if you go eight o'clock and reserve then we get to see otherwise you don't get to see again i think after that kind of black service also very difficult to get to see two hours they will be standing in the church without any seat available but they will be standing the worship make a such a difference in churches to bring souls once at the age of church they concentrate on the worship some more even in any place some more they will get some from keyboard somebody can play keyboard drums all the songs everything they have shout like anything people all the youngsters will come all the people will come and very short period they are lot of people in the assembly of god church everywhere and they are flourishing because of the worship mostly in worship so the worship is the key and for god for even for his favor and the might power in us in the family life in the church in the house the worship is worship is so wonderful here in jeremy it says in the people of the custom what they do they go to the forest and they cut a tree and they decorate with the 
iron, gold, and the silver. And then uh, that's the thing that they make as an idol. And they worship an idol. You know, the, the, the idols cannot speak, cannot walk, cannot do anything. But they are the one that they are serving. People are serving, uh, uh, you know, uh, the idols. The idol depends on the man for everything. So that's the thing that we see. In the Bible says, in the Jeremiah 10, a wooden idol is a worthless doctrine. Either, and the other is doctrine. So, what about the Christmas tree? What do you think about it? And many times the people say, it's also, you know, cut the trees and bring it and decorate and everything they do. But one thing, this, this is the thing that every day they were doing in all the years. And they are worshipping as an idol, worshipping as a god. But the Christians is only for the Christmas time. They decorate everything and they put a lights on everything. So that to celebrate, it is a celebration and the decoration of a house, that's all. Nothing more. So nobody is going to worship that. Nobody thinks that there is something, is, you know, uh, what you call the spiritual or something. This is the one that we do for the Christmas time. And nothing wrong on the tree. Yeah, we have somehow we decorate the house and we keep a tree and just celebrate and children are also enjoying that one. We don't worship it. We don't think that something is, is not species or something. Nothing at all. So I think that's uh, nothing to think about that. You know, because once in a year in the Christmas time we need to, to celebrate the Christmas. Nothing much more. But the Lord is the true God and He is the living God and the everlasting King at His wrath. The earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. So thus you shall say to them, the gods that have not made the heaven and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. That all the idols will perish one day and they will not be going to remain like that. For them that how much they bow down, how much they have a fear, how much they do all sorts of things and they take time and they go here from you know far out places to the temple they drive and they go every Friday in the evening for here America, Hindus. Some people they go to even New York also there are some temples. Then in the Bridgewater and so many other places they all go. Who called them? They never called them. Nobody called them. Nobody said come to the temple. They go and they move. But here we make the people and we do all sorts of things and they you know, have no time. But they make it in such a way they go, you know, the, the temples, they built it. It's a huge temple in New York, some places. And then there was a comment also, this is, you know, and they, they celebrated is there uh, that in the Indian day, huge crowd. And some people they commented that you know these people are against it. My Islam, just comparing the India where the Ayatya was built, so many things are going on. And they are building so many uh, uh, temples in all over uh, America. Even in the Dubai, even that country, and they give the place and they give money, they build a very big temples. So now you know, for Christians we don't know where we are all sleeping. So you know we have to wake up and see that how that we can bring the souls to Christ and you know we have to put some effort we ask them so that God loved us and we love him more and he has blessed us so that we can at least we should do for the Lord and Exodus 19 10 says and the Lord said to Moses go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes even on those days, it was so concerned that how the, the people has to go into the presence of God. And says, let them wash their clothes, let them pay back, you know, and they clean up. And then they had to come to the presence. And when we come to the church, how that we have taken priority, you know, at times, sometimes some people they sleep and then morning get up in the same dress, they come to the church. That's what the Christianity. And they just, you know, they can come in any form without trouble or drugs or the other thing they see they wear. They're not bothered at all. Going to your place, just and then they go away. That's not the way that God expects from us. So we have to 
keep that God in such a way that uh, you know we honor Him in all the things what we do. That's where the blessing comes. And you know, so and uh, and again about uh, the decoration is the first Peter three four. Do not let your adornment to merely outward. So what does it mean? It does not say that you did not decorate by yourself. Maybe ladies they decorate with the, you know, the hair and the, you know, jewels and the, you know, costly dresses. The Bible did not say that you should not have anything. And Bible says that should not be your decoration. So this outward decoration is not a decoration. That's what it says in First Peter 3, 4. Rather, let be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of the Lord. That's what God expects us. But doesn't mean that you should not wear any jewel, only you should wear any, only the white dress, and color dress cannot be come inside. And you know, all sort of things, and you should not put even a chain or something else, and you should remove it, you should not have any sort of things. You should come. In. So that is how the man has done it, not the God. God never did like that, you should not have any sort of things. But the only thing that you don't expect, that is only your adoration. Putting a lot of jewels and some, you know, all saris, and you know, having going to the May, you know, address and all sort of things. That's, that is okay, but that, that is not counted as a you know, declaration what in the face of God. And what God expects us this one, for in the manner in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husband. Even that is an adoration then in the, in the Lord's face. And to the, the holy woman to serve to the husband, that also considered as an adoration. And in the God he expect the inner beauty of a person, not the outer beauty. So that's what we say that our God is. God is always examining our heart, not the outside. He doesn't look an outside and we say anything that you know how their heart is. So that is the thing that things so. The love plays a very important role in everything. Where the love is the what is then more than, you know, the faith and uh, hope, everything. The love is, you know, the, the first one. So when we have a love, the godly liveliness, then, then we have the beauty, uh, you know, of that you know, adoration to worship God. That's the thing, the love makes the things. Suppose on those days, you know, you they were been appointed uh, in the singers everything. And even in America also, if somebody calls them for a you know, song and everything or a play something, we have to pay the money. They come for the money, not for the car. So that they are not worshipping, they are not doing it. They are coming and doing something like a program in the church. So that is not accepted to God. They have accepted to God that, that through our you know, heart, and as we love Him with our heart and the mind and the soul, the same way we worship Him, and from our heart, that's what the adoration. And also, and you know, when the Samaritan woman, then uh, she was telling, you know, Jesus, that uh, you people are wanted to come to Jerusalem to worship, but our forefathers were worshipped on the mountain. And uh, then he says, the time is come, and the people can worship the God every, any, everywhere. And, uh, you know, so then again he says, how to worship the God? The God is in the spirit. The, the one who worship it, is what we worshiping in the spirit and the truth. So that is an adoration for God, that the beauty of an adoration to worship God in, you know, in, the, in the righteousness, in the holiness, and you know, in the true word, the, the, the truth and the, you know, the spirit. So that's what the God has given us, the spirit to worship uh, thing. And that's will be a difference you can see always. Simply we are singing and worshipping. Some people will be united with the Holy Spirit and worshipping. There will be a different variation with that. 
and you know, and uh, so, so not necessary to be anointed to the worship. You know, the anointing is a little really different. Okay, so yes, everyone we have a Holy Spirit. So when we can rejoice in the Holy Spirit, and then we can you know worship the Lord in the you know truth and the and the Holy Spirit. So that's what he expected from us. So the anointing is something that it immediately makes something power from the Holy Spirit does things. That's what he did. When they go for the, you know, the, uh, to fight with the enemies, where the God, you know, the Holy Spirit, there it does the work there. So in all the things. So that's why you know, First Corinthians chapter three, four. Love suffers long and it's, you know, we know that how the love works. Love does not envy, love does not, uh, you know, parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, you know, and, and, and thinks, no, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoice in the truth, bears all things, believers of belief. Believes all things, hope all things, endure all things. Love never fails. So that is a key that we ask. The God is love. How He commanded His love to die for the sinner like us. So how much love we have towards God, even in worship, even in doing things, and all the things. So certainly, you know, when the congregation comes, and you know, there should be noise. We can say. But we are, we are a very silent people, so that's to be just yeah, yeah, inside our we will be worshipping. Just we will not bring out the oh, words. In some churches, oh God, one silent church, seven church. So we have, by the side of the seven and another village church, all the people in a way to us. And then the man that he was not in much educated. And uh, he never got a job. He finished some SSLC something. He never got a job. And finally, people said, he's a Hindu guy. And finally, he told them that you accept Jesus and he'll give you a job and all sort of things. And with the faith that he prayed and then, uh, uh, and he got a job in the electric, electricity board. You know what he did? Only Jesus gave me the job. Now I don't want this job that I'm going to work for him, then he started the church. And that time I know that, you know, how it was. And when they started worshipping all the ladies and gents, completely white, the church is full of white. It's like the heaven to open. That's the way that, that they were worshipping God. So it's not necessary, not necessary that you have to shop, but the worshipping in such a way, it's just so amazing, you know, like, so that, that, you know, really that we can see the presence of God so much. So even people, you know, like, uh, um, it's a thing that even when we read a response to reading, how many people they read it? And how many people wise comes out in our churches? And it may be in some. Tamil Nadu is not like that. That will be going like that. Our people are standing only. Sometimes they were, you know, they, even the Bible is there, they are standing, they don't read at all. Even when we put a worship verse, you know, like, and only when their part, when the worship comes, then they open up all the worship, and they are standing idle. That is not the worship. And the people are looking, you know, why he is standing there without singing, then let him go, it is not a, why he has to be there when he doesn't sing as a worship person. So that, that's, you know, like, I mean, there's so, there's so many things are God watching and see that how that we give the heart to do to things, you know. So, so if you don't know the language, it's okay. At least when we know in Tamil, and then we can you know, along with everyone, you know, uh, you know, everyone has to guess. You know, about three people are there, and when the turn comes, another person he's sitting, otherwise he's standing. Look at them. They say, why are you standing there then? <laughs> then you come and hear. <laughs> That's all they know like that. Uh, so, we are taking that as a granted that any manner we can worship God, not like that. 
So we should have a fear of God and we should worship in such a way that you know bring down 